This video is for stage six informative explanatory writing, focusing on the description organizer. Now let's go back and get the big picture of all these expository organizers so you see where stage six fits. On page 118 and 119, you will see six informative explanatory organizers. On page 118, these are the three that we need to master in second and third grade. The top one is the categories organizer. We worked on that in stage five. The bottom one is the sequence organizer. We worked on that in stage five. Now we're heading to the description organizer. That is stage six. All three of these organizers are going to be taught to second and third grade. Stage five, focusing on the categories and focusing on the sequence, while stage six is going to work on the description. Stage six lesson pages begin on page 176. Now let's review all the pages in this section. On this page is our chant. We will introduce descriptive writing and that paragraph format to the children using this descriptive paragraph chant. On the following page, page 177, is your teacher at a glance sheet with the step-by-step -step directions that you will follow when teaching the students how to write a descriptive paragraph. On page 178, you will notice a wall chart for the students to follow through the lesson so they can learn step-by-step -step what they need to know metacognitively to write their own descriptive paragraphs. This chart could be made by you, or I highly suggest that you download our eight and a half by 14 colorful chart on our website so that you can display it for the students to follow during the lesson. Below is an empty square for you to fill in during the demonstration lesson on this video. But I highly recommend that you grab a eight and a half by 11 blank piece of paper in order to follow along in this lesson, just like the students would. On page 179 are all the tools that you need in order to teach the descriptive paragraph. Notice in this box, we have a picture of the hand sign, the memory device that I teach the students so that they can write a descriptive paragraph independently on their own. There's nothing worse than when children have organizers and they don't know how to use them. The hand sign is a memory device that walks them through the steps of how to fill in their organizer. Also in this box is the organizer itself showing you where the topic sentence of the introduction, the body where the details go, and the conclusion. Below that are transition words that you can use for a descriptive piece of writing. I highly recommend that you put those transition words on a large chart so when you're ready to use them, the kids can look at them up on the wall or you can just pull them up quickly on a chart. On page 180, you will find a sample description organizer completely filled out. Although this is a description of an eyeball, our demonstration lesson will use another subject. We're going to continue with the spider, just like we did in stage five. But we'll be writing a descriptive paragraph of a spider in our demonstration lesson, so that you can see how the brainstorm connects to your actual writing. The sample I have here is of a unit of study that we had learned about the eye and different things in light in physics. So we wrote a descriptive paragraph here. On the following page is the sample writing from that eye description paragraph. Notice you have a student sample piece of writing as well as the checklist for you to check that writing to make sure that all the skills at this stage six lesson are in place. I have what should the child have when it comes to content and organization. And I have the list of skills there so that you can look at their paper, analyze it to make sure that they have all that in their writing, as well as at the sentence level. This way you can look at their sentences and identify what they need in their sentences at this stage six level. And finally, the same with mechanics. I've reviewed all of our different pages that are in this section for stage six. We will start with the chant to introduce stage six descriptive writing at the paragraph level. Back on page 176, let's start our lesson introducing children what a descriptive paragraph is 
through a chant. Whenever you start a lesson, you always want to start off by introducing to the children what they're going to do. And there's nothing that's going to make a child more involved in a lesson and participate, not just sit back and passively learn, but actually engage their learning by having them act out what all the parts of the paragraph are, using it in a chant, and have some sort of a visual for them to follow. We are using all of our modalities, our visual, our auditory. We're making sure that we have our tactile kinesthetic in place so that we engage every student and that's how the brain will learn at a more efficient rate because we're using all of these modalities to understand, in this case, what all the parts of a descriptive paragraph are. It's a fabulous technique for you to use, not only to introduce, but for your children to use as a device to pull up that memory when they need to write the descriptive paragraphs on their own. Let's begin with our chant. Boys and girls, we are going to write a descriptive paragraph. Everyone look at me and say, why do we need to write a descriptive paragraph? And the kids ask me that, and I say, thank you for asking me. The reason why is when I am writing information, if I know the reader, the person who's going to read my writing, needs to know about the subject. Who or what is this information about? Before I can tell them anything about it, then I need to write a description of my subject. What do I mean by that? Well, if I was writing about cells, I probably need to have a descriptive paragraph about all the parts of a cell so that my reader knows what a cell is before I tell them more information. If I was writing about animals on a farm, like writing about pigs, I probably would do a description of a pig so that my reader knows all the parts of a pig. They can visualize a pig and know what it is. Same thing if I was writing about a volcano. I would probably start with a description when I'm giving information about volcanoes so my reader knows what all the parts of the subject the volcano is. And that's important because if you don't even know what the subject is, how can you learn information about it? So a descriptive paragraph is when we are going to give our reader a description of the subject so that they can learn more information about it. Now let's find out what all the parts of that description are. The descriptive paragraph has, oh, this is great. It has the same format, introduction, body, and conclusion. We've already learned that. We've learned introduction, body, conclusion. Let's do that part again, ready? A descriptive, ooh, let's pretend like we're drawing a picture so that we create a picture in the reader's mind. A descriptive paragraph has a introduction, body, and a conclusion. Let's go to the introduction. Ready? Introduction. Topic sentence. Write a definition. Now, when we say definition, we're going to make an equal sign with our hands. Write a definition. And a definition, the reason why we're doing an equal sign means that whoever the subject is, we're going to define what it is in our description by just telling you quickly, like you would read from a dictionary, what our subject is or we're gonna give a big picture what our subject looks like, a big picture of our subject. So when we say topic sentence, write a definition of who or what is being described. Let's go back and try it again. A descriptive paragraph has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. In the introduction is the topic sentence. Write a definition of who or what is being described body, draw a picture of the subject, label the parts, and tell the function of the parts. Let's go back. Introduction, body, conclusion. Introduction, topic sentence, write a definition of who or what is being described. Body, draw a picture of the subject, label the parts, and tell the function of the parts. Conclusion, repeat that topic sentence, but use different words. Now let's say this really quickly. A descriptive paragraph has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. In the introduction is the topic sentence. Write a definition of who or what we're going to describe. Body, draw a picture of the subject. Label the parts and tell the function of the parts. Conclusion, repeat that topic sentence, but use different words. We have all three parts of our organizer. Let's jump to page 178 so we can draw the organizer as a review. On page 178, 
We have our blank piece of paper. What do we need to have in a descriptive paragraph? An introduction, body, and a conclusion. So we will draw a line on the top and draw a line on the bottom. This is so easy. It's just like the organizer that we learned in stage five. It has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Let's go back up to the top where the introduction is though. What do we need? We need a definition. So we're going to put an equal sign here. And then we have our body. That's where we're going to draw a picture of the subject, label the parts, and tell the function of the parts. And finally, on the bottom is our conclusion. I'm going to put another equal sign there because we're repeating that topic sentence using different words. There's our organizer with our introduction, body, and conclusion. I highly suggest that you grab a blank piece of paper right now and follow along in our demo lesson. The students will have a blank piece of paper in front of them at their tables. Again, they're following along in this lesson. Eventually, when they learn the steps, they will be able to write descriptions on their own. I'm going to go back and as a reference and show the children on our brainstorm that we had prepared together where they gave me all the information they knew about spiders. On our wall chart, I'll remind students that we had drawn a picture of the spider and labeled the different parts and the function, that we have a lot of our information there in order to pull to write our own descriptive paragraphs. Here's your blank sheet of paper. Remember, draw a line across the top, draw a line across the bottom, put equal signs in the introduction and put equal signs where the conclusion will be. We have our easy organizer for a description. Let's look at step one on our descriptive paragraph steps and that is topic sentence. Description, who or what are we going to describe? we're going to describe a spider. I could write spider or draw a spider. I think I'll just write spider. Remember, you want all the kids, whenever you write down words, you want them to write them quickly, chunk the letters together quickly. S-P-I, D-E-R, S, spiders. Spiders, now let's define what spiders are. And when we have a description, we can actually have a definition, like you would read from the dictionary, or we can give the big picture. What are the major parts of a spider? So that when I describe it, the reader has the big picture to build on. I think we're going to use the big picture. A spider, what's the big picture of a spider? Oh, it has two body parts and eight legs. We have two body parts and eight legs. Let's write legs, L-E-G-S. I also drew eight legs sticking out of the top body part. Spiders have two body parts and eight legs. Excellent topic sentence. Let's go back and let's repeat it again. Spiders have two body parts and eight legs. I have the children turn to each other and they practice saying their topic sentence. We have our topic sentence. We've defined, we've given a big picture of what a spider is. Where are we heading now, everybody? Body. And what do we need to do in the body? We're going to use our hand sign as a memory device to help us remember how to fill in the body of the organizer. What's our hand sign? Draw a picture of our subject. So we will draw a picture of the spider. Then what will we do? Label the parts. So whatever parts we need to describe, we will label them. Then what will we do after we label the parts? We will go and tell the function of the parts. That means we will say what the part does, why it's important, how it works, or what is it. So the job of that part, what it does, how it works, why it's important, or just what is it. We will answer one of those questions to tell the function of the part. We drew a picture, label the important parts, tell the function of the parts, and finally, add some fancy words. That's what we need to do in the body of our paper. Let's get to work. What was step one? Draw a picture. Because if I'm describing, I need to see what this subject looks like. So the first thing you do, draw a picture. This is not an art project. We're not taking a long time doing this. This is supposed to be a fast sketch. So I know that there's two body parts. The bottom part is bigger than the top part, 
and the top part has those eight legs sticking out of it. We had fangs, we had those pedipalps, we have some eyeballs, and down on the bottom, I had some little holes here for the spinnerets. We are ready to go. We drew a picture of our spider, a fast sketch. After we draw a picture, what did our hand sign say to do next? Draw a picture, label the parts. Ah, now we need to go back and label what's important to describe on the spider. Let's start at the top. Let's see, the fangs. Let's write fangs here. Put a circle. What is another thing that we need to describe? Ooh, let's describe the legs. Put a circle. What's another thing we need to describe? Hmm, let's describe the pedipalps. Put a circle. Let's do one last thing on the legs. Maybe we'll put the hair there. Let's write hair. Put a circle. And on the bottom where we have the second half of our spider, let's write abdomen. Let's put a circle. And let's also put spinnerets. Let's put a circle. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a lot of information. I think we will stop now. So we've labeled the important parts. What do we need to do next? Draw a picture, done. Label the important parts, done. What's next? Tell the function of the parts. Why they're important, how they work, what they do, or what is it? We're going to answer one of those questions to help tell what the function, the job of the part is. Let's go to the fangs. Draw a box below the fangs to put the function in. What do the fangs do? Every time we're putting information down on this organizer, the children are telling me what to put down. We are doing this in an interactive way because they know this information. When I say fangs, what's the function of the fangs? What's the job? What do the fangs do? The children are talking to each other and then we come back and we're going to put the function. Oh, they inject poison. Mmm, inject poison. Let's put that there. Let's now go back and tell the function of the legs. What do the legs do? Again, the children are talking to each other. The legs are going to help the spider move. So the legs are the way the spider moves its entire body, whether it's on the ground or a web. Let's go to the pedipalps. What's the function of the pedipalps? What's its job? What does it do? The pedipalps hold taste, and smell food. Ooh, that's good. That's an important part of the body. So we have our pedipalps, hold, taste, and smell. It's food, it's prey. The fangs inject poison into its prey. The legs help it move quickly. The hair, what's the hair do? The hair can feel vibrations. So let's put feel, and also the hair can smell. That's weird, it can smell? How funny is that? So the hair can feel vibrations. Let's make like a wavy line so we can remember that and smell. The bottom part of the spider is the abdomen. What can we say? What's the function of the abdomen? We know that the abdomen is where the lungs and the heart are in the spider. So we have our lungs. Maybe I'll just draw a heart. But what's really important about the abdomen that we want to say is that's where the spider makes its silk. We have the abdomen has the lungs and heart, but this is the area where the spider makes its silk. Finally, let's go to the spinnerets. What's the function of the spinnerets? The spinnerets help release and wind the silk together from the body. So we're going to write release and wind. Excellent. We have all the parts labeled and the function of the parts. Let's go back to our hand sign. Is there one more thing we need to do? Draw a picture, we did it. Label the important parts, we did it. Tell the function of those parts. What's their jobs? Did it. What's the last thing? Add fancy words. Let's see if we can go back and describe any of these body parts so that our reader not only can know the function, but can visually see each part to build that visual in their brain. Let's start with the fangs. What is it about the fangs that we want the reader to see? Ooh, they're pointy. 
So the pointy fangs. What about the pedipalps? There's a pair of pedipalps, meaning there's two of them. So let's put pair. What about the legs? How can we describe the legs? Well, I think we should go back and say eight legs again. What about the hair? How can we describe the hair? Tiny. What about the abdomen? Well, this is the largest part of the body, so let's write the large abdomen. And the spinnerets. Ooh, they're busy, so let's write busy. We have described all the parts of the spider. We will orally rehearse this, but let me ask you, do you notice the activity that I'm doing here for descriptive writing? Does it remind you of another activity that we have done? That's right, content diagrams. Not only do content diagrams give you the ability to front load a description of the subject that they're going to be learning about embedded with vocabulary, but it is also the technique for them to write their own descriptions later when they know all the information on their own. We have our introduction, our topic sentence. Spiders have two body parts and eight legs. Then we had the body where we drew a picture, labeled the parts, tell the function of the parts, and describe them. Finally, on the bottom is the conclusion. What do we do in the conclusion? Repeat that big idea, but use different words. So I'm going to go over here and say spiders. Hmm, I could say spiders, or I could say these interesting creatures. Ooh, let's put creatures here. And over here I have, for the other half, have two body parts and eight legs. What if I just say these creatures have interesting body parts? So I'll just put body parts here. I have all the information. Let's practice an oral rehearsal. And when I say oral rehearsal, I mean we are practicing how we are going to write this information. Let's practice. Spiders have two body parts and eight legs. There's our topic sentence. Let's go to the body. How am I going to begin these sentences? I could have transitions. Description transitions tell the reader where to go in the picture they're building. So, so far, I told the reader a spider has two body parts, eight legs. Now, I may need to tell them where to go on the spider as I describe it. We could go to the pedipalps, the fangs. We could go to the legs. Let's start at the top of the spider and then work our way down. So, maybe I could have sticking out. Sticking out of the spider's head are pointy fangs that inject poison and a pair of pedipalps that hold, taste, and smell its food. Excellent. Look at that. We took two ideas and we put them together. How do we do it? We use the word and. Let me circle that there. Let's have and there. We started with sticking out. I'm going to take my transition, sticking out, write it on my page, and I'm going to put a number one there. This is where I'm starting on my description. Sticking out from the head are the pointy fangs that inject poison and a pair of pedipalps that hold, taste, and smell its food. That's excellent. That's an entire sentence. I think I will box that entire sentence together right there. And I know that's my number one. I'll search for the number one. Moving down on the body, I now have the eight legs and the hair. I think I'll do that next for my next sentence. So, I already had sticking out. I don't need to have a transition. I could just say it's eight legs. So let's start with number two here and start with the word it. It has eight legs. I'm gonna erase its and I'm just going to say it has eight legs. Notice I'm going back and forth, taking the information, and we are planning our sentences. It doesn't have to be perfect. We want to keep revising until it sounds good. Make sure you're not trying to be perfect with the kids. You're saying, hmm, I don't like how that sounds. Let's go back and say it again. It has eight legs that help it move, but the tiny hairs at the end of the legs, hmm. It has eight legs with tiny hairs at the end that help it feel vibrations, and smell. Hmm, I like that better. 
So I'm not even going to say the move part. I'm just going to say it has eight legs with tiny hairs at the end to help it feel vibrations and to smell. That's excellent. So there's my number two. I'm gonna circle here and circle here and put number two. So we know we're going to go to that for our second sentence. Next, let's go down to the bottom. The large abdomen, hmm, I could say that. Let's see if I could use a transition. Where is the large abdomen? Is it on top of, surrounding, in the middle of, no, sticking out, no, I already used that. At the end of the spider, I could say that. Or I could say the largest part of this spider is the abdomen, where there are lungs, the heart, and silk. I think that's too busy. Let's get rid of lungs and heart and just talk about where it makes the silk there. We don't need to have every single thing. Let's go back and say it again. The largest part of the spider is the abdomen where it makes it silk. Much better. That's going to be number three. Let's go back and practice everything. A spider has two body parts and eight legs. Now jump to number one. Sticking out from the head are pointy fangs that inject poison and a pair of pedipalps that hold, taste, and smell its food. Its eight legs have tiny hairs at the end so it can feel vibrations and smell. The largest part of the spider is the abdomen where it makes its silk. This is really good. The last thing we have are the spinnerets. So did you notice I didn't jump around the spider, I chose the direction. We went from the top to the bottom. Let's put number four here. The busy spinnerets help release and wind the silk. Excellent. We'll just put the word the there. Let's go to the bottom. These amazing creatures have interesting body parts. Let's go back and read the whole thing. This is a great description. Spiders have two body parts and eight legs. Jump to number one. Sticking out from its head are pointy fangs that inject poison and a pair of pedipalps that help hold, taste, and smell its food. Its eight legs have tiny hairs at the bottom so it can feel vibrations and smell. The largest part of the spider is the abdomen where it makes its silk. The busy spinnerets release and wind the silk so it can make its web. These amazing creatures have different body parts. We have our introduction, our body, our conclusion. We have orally rehearsed this so it sounds like writing. Get out your red pencil, it's punctuation time. The children have a red pencil, so do you. Let's go through our organizer and mark where the capitals and the periods go. If you have students who don't need to do this and they can orally rehearse their paper on their own, have them go write. Otherwise, the children that still need reminders of, for capitals and periods and don't write complete sentences, have them make the markings on their organizer. This is an incredible technique for them to learn grammar and mechanics on the organizer. When they go and write and they don't write complete sentences, they don't have their capitals and stops, when you try to fix a piece of writing with all the words on it, they don't understand it. When you use the organizer, it makes much more sense. Let's do it. Let's go up to our topic sentence. What do we have? Spiders, that's our first word. What are we going to do? Put a capital there, three lines under it. Spiders have two body parts and, ooh, I'm gonna put the word and there, eight legs. We're done with our sentence, period. Go over to number one. Sticking out from their head, so now I know I'm gonna just put the word head here, and then a comma. Sticking out from their head are pointy fangs that inject poison and a pair of pedipalps that help it hold, comma, taste, comma, and help smell their food. Let's go back and read it again. Spiders have two body parts and eight legs. Sticking out from their heads, ooh, I need to put an S there because I said spiders. So sticking out from their heads are pointy fangs that inject poison and a pair of pedipalps that help hold, taste, and smell their food. Let's go to number two. 
It's eight legs. So now I'm going to put a capital on it. It's eight legs have tiny hairs that help them feel vibrations and smell, period. Let's go to number three. The largest part of their body, ooh, let's put a TH there, the largest part of their body is the abdomen that makes their silk, period. The busy spinnerets, capital, help them release and wind silk, period. Finally at the bottom, these amazing creatures have interesting body parts. The students will take their organizer, orally rehearse it, I walk around. Students who can say their entire organizer independently on their own, and I'm not asking them to memorize. Every time we go back and say this, it needs to make sense. They can change it around. That's what I want them to do. I want them to say the sentences a little differently. Revise it, make each sentence sound better and better. Once they have control over this language, they are going to start writing. And when they write, they need to keep talking. Talk and write, keep saying your organizer and write. Children who need help with language are going to now meet with me in a small group and we will review this organizer through the language rehearsal and use a lot of motions to help them through it. Once they can go through and say it, then I have them go and start writing. Also, when students finish writing, they need to go back to their written paper and count. I'm going to count my periods. I'll start at the top of the organizer. I'm just looking at the red dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that I'm just finding the red dots and it's easy then. I have those six dots that I know when I finish writing my paper, I'm going to go back and I'm going to count how many periods do I have in my paper? There better be six, and if there aren't six, then I know I didn't have complete sentences. So I go back to my organizer, I read each part, and I match it to my writing to figure out where I left out that period. That makes the student responsible for their capitals and their periods instead of you going back and showing them where they missed. You may want to say, count how many periods you have, it doesn't match, Go back and reread each part of your organizer. See if you can find out where that missing period goes. It's a wonderful technique for you to use so students already will be able to edit their papers instead of you collecting papers and having to do it. You could also have students switch papers with each other. Circle the capitals, circle their periods, and count and make sure that they match. There's many different techniques that you can use for that editing piece. We have a separate chapter that will actually go through all the different editing and revising techniques that you can use when they finish their writing. Once they have these steps down, where they can follow these steps to write their own descriptions, then they will be writing descriptive paragraphs on their own. Not every child will be ready at the same time. So how do I do this? I may have children who have the steps under their belt work in pairs, so those are homogeneous pairs. Then I may have a small group with me where we continue walking through the steps. Eventually, everybody will know the steps and write independently on their own. That's our descriptive writing activity and the steps. Please try it out with your students. I think you will find it will be very successful and engaging.